Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking all the Titans in the game based on the current meta in 2022. Now, I have done a video very similar to this, but for robots, my top 10 robots in 2022, if you guys missed it, definitely check it out. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description and also the pinned comment. And uh, with this one, I'm going to do something very similar, uh, talking about each Titan uh, but also recommending builds for uh, each one in case you happen to have it. So with that said, I guess let's get started with the number 9 pick here, the kid. Okay, so coming in at number 9 this year should come as no surprise. It is the kid. Um, the kid is your introductory titan. Um, there's a couple of things that I like about the kid. So the speed, the amount of health, the stove ability. Um, you know, those are the things that I kind of like about it. Um, but this is not a titan that you want to level up um, early on. I think I would rather focus on like the weapons, the modules, and then transition to one of the other titans. Um, in terms of weaknesses, being able to only fire your beta weapons, so your uh, light or your side weapons in this case, uh, until you have your ability, then you get resistance and you can fire your alpha weapon. Now, there's a couple of other things that, uh, you know, you have to be careful of, you know, with the kid. If you are attacking something like, say, um, a Minos or a Luchador which has a reflector shield you can't exactly turn your stove ability off so you are going to be inflicting damage on yourself uh, if you do activate that stove ability. Now in terms of what I found um, you know the best mothership uh, for the kid is actually the Mantis being able to heal up uh, actually helps a lot. I did try uh, the Orion and uh, the Monarch but I think uh, you know for this particular Titan the Mantis is the one to go for. Now in terms of the weapons for the kid, I would say the Grom Cinder, Grom Squall and the Dazzler Lantern weapons are the best uh, suited for this Titan. Okay, so moving on to number 8 this year, we have the Arthur. Now for the most part, the Arthur has actually held up really well, except with the introduction of the Minos, the Miramet and also uh, the Luchador, the Arthur has a new set of threats and those threats uh, you have to be careful of engaging, you know, at close range. So in the current meta, I would say Dazzler Lantern, Basilisk Crate, Cataclysm and Cyclone weapons are probably best suited, uh, you know, for this Titan. But overall, in terms of value for your Platinum, the Arthur is actually a really good pick. And I do run the Arthur, uh, you know, on my baby account. But uh, let's talk about what makes the Arthur strong. So it has really strong physical shields. I know some players might disagree with this, but you know, physical shields are very effective at blocking energy weapons. So whether it be Dazzler Lantern, Cataclysm Cyclone, uh, Jadam Kirasia, Striker weapons, even to some extent, uh, you know, the Basilisk and Crate, the physical shields are very effective at blocking those weapons. It also has a pretty powerful blast wave, so anyone who is within a 100 meter radius, you can do damage to them by using the blast wave, but also knocking them off beacons. And, you know, that can come in handy when it comes to defending, um, you know, a beacon, especially on maps like, uh, you know, castle map or carrier, you can really exploit it by knocking them uh, into the gorge or the ocean uh, using the blast wave of the Arthur. Now, in terms of the mothership, I would say go with the Mantis. Taking the spot at number 7 this year, we have the Aoming. So the Aoming used to be in the meta before. It used to be one of the top titans with the Jadam and Kyrosia weapons. Um, and then those weapons were nerfed down. And I think the Aoming was nerfed down slightly as well. So we started to see the Aoming, you know, fade. And uh, recently I have started to notice more players running it. And that is because of the Dazzler and Lantern weapons. So these weapons have a range of up to 600 meters, similar to the Jadam and Kyrosia, except with the Dazzler and Lantern, you have the blinding effect. Now, in terms of other builds for the Aoming, I would say maybe Basilisk Crate, although in all honesty, if I had to run just one build for the Aoming, I would say Dazzler Lantern is the way to go. You will have a lot of firepower, you have the blinding effect, uh, you also have the range, and uh, you know, on a larger map, this uh, build can just dominate the red team. So um, the reason why I mentioned Basilisk Crate, it's mostly because these weapons are really effective against any kind of Titan with a reflector shield. So whether it be the Minos or the Luchador, uh, you know, those weapons have corrosion and it works really well at countering uh, those Titans. Now, in terms of which mothership I would use for the Aoming, uh, probably either Orion, um, possibly Monarch, 
Um, you could try Mantis. The only thing with Mantis is if you use Mantis, you have to be on the ground if you're going to try to heal up. Or you have to be flying over like a ledge or something, uh, which is what you actually see me doing right now. So if I flew over this ledge and put down a heal, uh, that would allow me to heal my, um, you know, arming up. Moving up the list to number 6, we have the Heimdall. So the Heimdall is the newest addition to the game. However, even after recent buff, we still aren't really seeing the Heimdall being used. And if we are, most times it's with the Lantern weapons. Um, I rank the Heimdall at number 6 because it can be a great support titan. Um, the only thing is you have to stay within a 100 meter radius um, you know, of your teammates if you are going to be healing them up. But it does have the built-in weapon. It has the suppression bomb which can come in handy if you are dealing with multiple titans. Now, the weakness I found with the Heimdall is being that uh, you can only heal within a 100 meter radius, you have to be very careful, you know, especially if you're going to be healing up titans, who you decide to kind of follow. Because if you are following like a luchador and another luchador jumps in, uh, that is kind of your weakness because it's not really a brawling titan. And that's why the uh, Heimdall goes down really fast. So in terms of the weapons, because you have to kind of keep your distance, I would say the Lantern, Cyclone, uh, Crates, Retaliators are probably the best weapons uh, for this Titan. And in terms of the Mothership, I would actually go with the Mantis. Now, I know I am using the Orion in this gameplay footage here, but there were many moments both in this game and, you know, other games when I was trying to get footage for this video where the Mantis actually would have served me a lot better. This year's number 5 pick goes to the Shuranga. So what makes the Shuranga strong? So it has 3 alpha weapon slots. Um, it has the ability to also turn on full power mode which allows it to boost its damage further by 50%. It has a phase exile which can temporarily put a player into phase shift. And this can be really handy especially if you are playing beacon rush or domination mode. And in terms of its weakness, uh, being that it is a slow titan, it's actually very vulnerable to uh, faster titans like the Minos, uh, Luchador, or even the uh, Miramets because of the uh, stealth that the Miramets has. Now, in terms of weapons, if I had to run the Shuranga at this point in the game, I would probably lean more towards uh, Dazzler, uh, Basilisk, possibly even Grom if I'm going to be playing Beacon Rush. This way I can actually drop in on a beacon and surprise the enemy because they're going to be right next to me. Uh, so that might be another option. And in terms of motherships, uh, you know, honestly, Orion, Mantis, uh, Monarch, all of them could work. But I think if you have a low-level Shuranga, you probably want to go with the Mantis. Charging its way into this year's number 4 spot, we have the Minos. So although the Minos only has 3 beta weapon slots, what it loses in firepower, it makes up for in speed and maneuverability. So what makes this Titan so strong? So I would say the charge ability, the reflector shield, the ability to cover large distances very quickly and also this is my favorite one the ability to avoid getting hit by motherships so if you know that there's going to be an orion strike on you you can use your charge ability to get out of there and uh, avoid getting hit now in terms of its weakness compared to other titans i would have to say probably its firepower uh, top pulls for the minos include cinder squall cyclone and for the mothership i would highly recommend going with mantis this year's number 3 spot goes to the Nodens. So the Nodens is still considered to be the best support titan in the game. So what makes the Nodens so strong? So the ability to heal 3 titans from 700 meters away at the same time. You have to kind of keep that in mind. You are healing up 3 titans from 700 meters away at the same time. Uh, that's why a lot of times in top squad battles you're going to see at least one Nodens you know, on that team. Now, in terms of weakness, I would say probably its speed. So a couple of updates ago, the Nodens, um, you know, did get its speed reduced. Um, it was nerfed slightly. Uh, that's why I mentioned the healing range was 700 meters uh, because before it used to be 600 meters. So they extended the healing range. Um, they gave it less speed, uh, which really isn't too much of a problem. You just have to be careful of playing it out in the open because if you get locked uh, down or, uh, you know, get hit by like a Miramets, you can't hit to cover as quickly and most times you end up going down. So you have to be very careful, uh, you know, when you play your Nodens. Top builds include the Lantern, the uh, Cyclone, Crate, Retaliators. You're going to notice all of them, um, you know, are range builds. And in terms of Mothership, definitely the Mantis. 
flying its way into this year's number two spot we have the Miramets. so some might actually consider this to be the number one titan but i'm gonna rank it as number two simply because it's a very fragile titan and while it can wipe out a luchador in one flight it can't push beacons and it can't defend against aggressive attacks it's also very vulnerable to the orion strikes so what makes this titan so strong so i would say definitely it's emp with the emp it's able to disable any titan or robot from using their ability and once it has been activated one flight of the miramets can easily wipe out a maxed out luchador so if you're in a luchador you have to make sure you keep your distance from this titan um, in terms of weakness so while the miramets does have deadly firepower it's actually a very fragile titan and as mentioned before it can be wiped out by orion strikes now the top builds for the Miramets at this point I would say Dazzler Lantern, Basilisk Crate, Vengeance Retaliators, Cataclysm Cyclone and for the Mothership I would actually lean more towards the Orion but you can use the Mantis and the Monarch as well. This year's Best Titan Award goes to the Luchador. With the ability to leap and cover large distances the Luchador not only has deadly firepower but it has a reflector shield as well. When you combine its large health pool and firepower, not many titans have the ability to bring this beast down. You will oftentimes see multiple luchadors being used in high level squad play, mixed in with both nodents and miramets. Weakness, the luchador can be a bit slow and sometimes can catch edges of buildings, as the frame of the luchador tends to be very wide. Top builds for the luchador include Grom Cinder, Grom Lantern, Dazzler Lantern, Grom Squall, and in terms of the mothership, I would go with the Orion, especially if you are running into a lot of Miramets. Uh, another option is to use also the Mantis mothership. So just a few things which I wanted to add as well. Uh, if you are going to be playing free for all, I highly recommend running something like the Minos because this way you can really take advantage of the speed and the maneuverability of that Titan. And as far as the Heimdall goes, I would keep an eye out on this Titan over the next couple of months because we may potentially see another buff to this Titan. And if that does happen, the Heimdall could actually climb up in rankings. So in the comment section below, what is your ranking for Titans in 2022? Thank you guys for watching and until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.